your data secure? Are you secure? I'm Dan Martis and today we are going to show you a few ways to secure your data as well as cover some electronic monitoring and intrusion detection systems. Currently, the most popular way to secure ourselves from intruders is still the lock and key. Although locks have become more sophisticated over time, they are still no match for someone with the knowledge and tools to pick a lock. Let's take a look at a couple relatively new ways people are implementing security in their lives. First we have the Microsoft Fingerprint Scanner. This kind of authentication is called biometrics and the traditional key is replaced by your own unique fingerprint. Other security measures in this category might include palm scanners, voice and facial recognition, and even retinal scanners. Yes, they really do exist. Here are a few ways you can use a fingerprint reader in your own home. To use the Microsoft Fingerprint Reader, you must have all the drivers and software installed to your computer, as well as the fingerprint reader itself plugged into a USB port. From there, you simply press any finger onto the reader. It won't recognize the fingerprint, but it does bring up the fingerprint registration wizard. This allows you to save up to 10 fingerprints in your computer. Okay, as you can see here, the 10 prints, these can be all yours, or a mixture of your family, friends, and guests. I'm going to start with the right index finger. It's going to ask me to scan it four times for consistency. Next, do we want to register another one? Sure, why not? Let's do the, the right thumb. Again, we have to do it four times for consistency. Okay, next, and we are done. From here, you can do several useful things. If you like to have company over and play music through your computer, instead of giving your guests your password so they can change songs, they can simply log in with a fingerprint. You won't have to worry anybody knowing your personal passwords for other logins as well. You can also go to any web page logon and then uh, you can associate your fingerprint with that login. So let's try it. Let's just press your fingerprint. It'll bring up a logon box. Just call this Dan, account name Dan. You have to put in your ULID and password to associate that information with your fingerprint. So let's do that. Okay, that's it. And once I press my fingerprint on here, it should log me in. And that's the Microsoft Fingerprint Reader. There has been some debate over the security of the Microsoft Fingerprint Reader, so I wanted to test this out for myself. Let's hack this thing. This is what we're going to need. Some gelatin, silly putty, then we need to boil some water, pour the gelatin into a bowl, carefully pour the boiling water onto the gelatin, Stir until the gelatin dissolves, press a finger into the silly putty, pour the gelatin mixture onto the mold, pop it in the fridge, then wait at least three hours. Okay, so the fingerprint reader can be fooled. It's still cool in my book. Let's take a look at smart card authentication. Okay, so this is your basic smart card and smart card reader. It looks like a credit card and has a computer chip embedded in the plastic that can process data. Smart cards are used by many industries including banking, healthcare, transportation, entertainment, and of course network security and physical access. I'm going to show you how you can use a smart card to log into a virtual private network. Let's take a look. With the drivers installed and the smart card reader plugged into a USB port, you simply need to acquire or set up a virtual private network dialer. I have my company issued VPN dialer right here, so I'm going to open that up. Okay, let's try to connect without the smart card first. Okay, it prompts me for a smart card. Let's look at the details. It does recognize my smart card reader, so let's try to insert the card. Okay, it recognizes the card immediately. Let's press OK. Besides having the dialer information and the smart card itself, you also need a PIN number. That just adds an extra layer of security. Okay. Let's see if it lets me connect here. Okay, I'm connected and now I can access my internal network with no problem. So as you can see, there are several layers of security you have with the smart card. 
It uses all three methods of authentication. That is, one, what the person knows, for example, the PIN number. Two, what the person has, the smart card. And three, even what the person is, which could be an employee or someone with access to that system. The idea behind this is that it might be easy to obtain one of these, such as the smart card itself, but without the knowledge or means, the card is useless. My friend Darren Parker from Bloomington Normal Realty told me that they use smart cards to access homes on the market. So let's go see how that works. Hey Dan. Not, not, Darren. not much. How are you doing? Good. It's called a Century Card. Any house on the MLS system can be accessed with it. So how does this work? All you got to do is put your card in here. Every realtor has a, a pin, just like an ATM card. You put in your pin. Pull the card out and it opens it and gives you the key to the house. I researched the vulnerabilities of the smart card, but they are far and few between. There are hacks for them, but they are not do-yourself friendly, so I'm unable to demonstrate this for you today. If you are interested in seeing how this works using Aston nail polish, do a quick search on YouTube for how to reverse engineer a satellite TV smart card. Well, that's it for the authentication side of physical security. Let's see what Rachel has to say about electronic monitoring and intrusion detection. Until next time.